Someone has written to me to ask me how to use the bellows on the Pentacon 6. So this video is to show how to do that. To start off, here we have a lovely Pentacon 6 camera. And uh, well, the first thing I'll do, actually, because it'll help us later, is I'll advance the shutter. So it advances the shutter, puts the mirror into the taking position and opens the lens to full aperture. And that's the thing that we really need to talk about uh, most on this video. So I'm going to take the lens off. Let's put the camera body over there for the moment. And if we look at the lens, um, I'm just going to turn that around. If we look at the lens, we should see that there is a very small white spot in the middle. That's the opening, the aperture. Uh, and if I push this pin on the back, the lens will open to maximum aperture. Now, when you mount the lens on the camera or on the bellows, it will open uh, the aperture to maximum. That gives you a nice, bright viewfinder image. And it is crucially important for focusing accurately. So we need the lens open. And when you fire the shutter on the camera, when the lens is on the camera, the lens will automatically stop down to the aperture that you have chosen. Let's turn this round. So we can see the back of the lens and that is the little pin that the camera holds in until the moment when the shutter is fired, at which point the lens aperture stops down to the value that you have chosen. If I look at the top of the lens, uh, this is the aperture ring. And I've deliberately set it on the minimum of f22. Um, but for uh, metering and for composing and focusing, it will automatically be on the maximum aperture, which this lens is 2.8. And I'm going to use the standard lens, which is the lens that I most often use for macro photography on the bellows. So we've said that the camera stops the lens down automatically when the lens is on the camera, but the bellows don't. So, here are the bellows, the Pentacon bellows for the Pentacon 6. I like to uh, uh, put a, a lens cap on the, or body cap, there's a camera body cap on the front and a standard lens rear cap on the back to keep any dust out and one adjusts the degree of magnification by turning this uh, a control here uh, to the amount that one wants. Now when we mount the lens on the bellows this little pin here will automatically open the lens for us. So I'll look for the locating pin on the top here there we are. I'll put that in there just a moment while I adjust it it'll come back into shot there we are and so we lock that on and I don't know if you'll be able to see but uh, the lens aperture is fully opened by the bellows and we need to stop it down and the way to stop it down is by using a double cable release now this is the Pentacon double cable release. Um, uh, other manufacturers make them and uh, in principle they should work in exactly the same way. I say in principle because the double cable release needs to have some adjustment. Uh, if you can look at the end of the cable release here, the two ends, as I press the plunger the pins come out uh, and if you look the 
the pins uh, that are closer to my body, uh, the lower pins probably in the picture, the lower pin comes out first. And then that's come up for quite a bit as I continue pressing, the other pin begins to come out. Why is that? It's because we must stop down the lens before the shutter opens. We mustn't get it the wrong way round. And this is easily adjusted by these adjustable collars. Uh, so you can see that one is a lot longer and that is on the side where in fact the pin comes out second. And the one that's on the minimum adjustment, the pin comes out first. We've got to get these the right way round. So I have labelled this one bellows and the other one I have labelled camera. So we'll put those together. But first of all, we better put the bellows on the camera. Or in fact, what we do is we put the camera on the bellows. So there we are. So, we've got that all assembled, and we make sure that we take the one that says bellows and we'll screw that into the front of the bellows. And then we screw this one into the shutter release on the camera. And, uh, I don't know if this will uh, be visible on the video, but anyway, as I squeeze the plunger, the lens stops down and then the shutter fires. All right, so the lens stops down first. Now, for the purpose of this video, um, I set the lens on the minimum aperture, which is f22. Um, but I want to talk about metering. Uh, how do you get the correct exposure? The easiest way to get the correct exposure is by using the metering prism. And of course the metering prism will be meter metering at your maximum aperture. So uh, if I give you as an example, uh, the maximum aperture 2.8. Suppose that the conditions in which I'm working indicate to me that I need a shutter speed of 125th of a second. That is not what I will use. Why not? Because at 2.8 with macro photography, your depth of field might be that much, might be a center, centimeter, might be a few millimeters. And as we stop down the lens and close the aperture, we will increase the depth of field, the in-focus depth. So if I stopped down to f4, that lets in half the light. We need to let the light in for twice as long, a 60th of a second. If I stop down to 5.6, I would need to give a 30th of a second. If I stop down to f8, each of these halves the amount of light coming in, I'd give double the exposure, a fifteenth of a second. f11, I would give an eighth. f16, I would give a quarter of a second. Uh, now there are various factors that determine um, the correct exposure. So I've written these out as well. I hope you can see that. Uh, the four factors that determine what will be the correct shutter speed. First, of course, is the sensitivity of the film in the camera. Uh, secondly, is the brightness of the light falling on the subject. The third thing is, of course, the aperture that you set on the lens. And I normally use f16 or possibly even f22 to increase that depth of field. Uh, and the final factor is how much you have extended the bellows. The more you extend the bellows, the more light you lose. 
uh, the more the intensity of the light reaching the film diminishes. We don't just um, take uh, my numbers, uh, you have to do your own metering uh, depending on your circumstances and I've done another example uh, which is closer to what I normally experience at f2.8 the meter may be telling me a 30th of a second stop down to f4 it'll be a 15th uh, now I carry these numbers in my head or you can write them out on a piece of paper because in fact I'm only going to meter at 2.8. I'm not going to try to meter at f16. Uh, it may go beyond the range of the meter if the light level is too low. But if at f2.8 the meter is telling me a 30th of a second, I will work out f4 at 15th, 5.6 at an eighth, and so on. And at my preferred aperture of f16, I would need one second. Uh, and in many circumstances, uh, maybe with a greater magnification, I might need two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds. Now, one disappointing thing about macro photography is if you don't get your images sharp. Um, so uh, I would like to suggest that you try to avoid focusing error. You use up focusing error. Um, for instance, by using uh, this focusing magnifier, uh, which on the back has diopter correction for your eyesight. So you can mount that on the camera instead of the prism. In fact, I don't usually do it. Why not? Because I would lose my metering. The metering is not in the body, the metering is in the prism. So, you can use this. You can put this on the back of the prism. Let me turn this round. Um, there's a little sort of spectacle lens protector here that just pops off. And then this will screw into there. I won't try to screw it in now. And it magnifies the central area by 2.7 times. So that helps with your focus. And as you can't see the whole area, you can fold it out of the way to check your composition. So that's one solution. And another solution is to use an angle finder, which is what I prefer. Again, we've got diopter correction for my eyesight. So I can adjust that before I start my macro session. Uh, and then I can mount that on there, screw it up tight, and I can put it at whatever angle I want that is convenient so that I can see my subject. One final thing before we stop. Um, if we're using exposures of several seconds, it's obvious that we can't do this handheld. The camera needs to be on a tripod. In fact, I don't normally mount the camera on the tripod. I put the tripod in one of the standards, usually the rear standard, of uh, the bellows so that I get this nicely balanced uh, on the tripod. I won't try to do that now but I will bring over here a tripod try not to hit too many things with the extended legs and the other thing I do obviously you can fine-tune your focus with the lens but in macro it will not have a lot of effect so I really recommend this Pentacon focusing slide. You mount your bellows on there and then you can just move this fractionally forward and back until you get uh, the perfect focus uh, for your image. Well, it needs a lot of preparation, but once you've done all of that, um, it's possible to produce some really fascinating photographs, whether it's flowers or insects or uh, small ele electronic components or working mechanisms of clocks and watches. Macro photography really is great fun. So I hope this helps you to get started and I wish you much success. <laughs>